portable chest x-ray and belly, cold general surgery. Frank, this is Dr. Seidel. You're going to be just fine. You've had a little accident. We're going to take care of you. You're bleeding pretty bad from your belly and stuff. We're going to do some tests here right away, okay? It's going to be first some blood work, and we're going to hook you up to some monitors. We need a central line right away. Get the okay. x-ray down here. I got the monitor. Call general surgery. We're going to need him for a belly case. Frank, you're going to be just fine. We're going to take care of you. One of the secretaries is calling your wife. Can you get the chaplain here, please? Here's the tray for the perineal massage. Okay, you scrub his belly. Frank, I want you to look right at my eyes up here, right at my nose. I'm just going to shine this in your eyes a little bit. Okay, other one. Good, I just want you to lie real still, okay? All right, let's get a Foley in him right now. Hand me that chest tube. We're going to get that on the side over here. Just scrub this side for me. Thank you, Frank, you're going to feel a little stick here. I'll try and numb it up for you a little bit. All right. Okay, if you're a little burned, then it's going to go numb for you. Take a deep breath. General surgery here yet? Comes the sun. Looks like a good day. Must be time for coffee. Mm, now that's the best idea I've heard all morning. Hey, did we bring those donuts? Yeah, behind you there in the bag. Oh, here they are. Boy, it's cool this morning. This will warm me up. Oh, thanks. I'll take one of those donuts there. Yeah, sure. Here you go. Hey, you can have the whole bag. <laughs> thanks a lot. You know, Frank, this is the first chance we've had to get together since your accident. Yeah. You know, it's been almost a year now. Has it been that long? Uh-huh. Boy. Well... It's just good to have you back to normal. Well, not exactly. Hmm? You know, that accident really changed my life. How's that? Is your back still bothering you? Nah, nothing like that. It just, that accident made me realize how fragile life is. In one moment, the dumb mistake almost cost me my life. Yeah, but Frank, it wasn't your fault. I mean, accidents just happen. That's why they call them accidents. Could have happened to anybody. You just had some bad luck. Nah, I've had a lot of time to think about this. Accidents don't just happen. People cause them. Actually, we don't talk much about accidents, do we? Unless, like Frank, a tragedy strikes close to us. And even then, we tend to think somewhat like his friend Bill, that accidents are just fate or bad luck or that they're just a part of life. Hi, I'm Pat Summerall, and I've been asked to be a part of this program to share some important new information about safety with you. As we look over the record of accidents in this country, the numbers are really frightening. Each year, accidents injure one of us every four seconds. Accidents kill one of us every six minutes. That adds up to about two and a half million injuries and 100,000 deaths a year. In fact, accidents are the fourth leading cause of death for all ages. But this program is not about the past. It's about our future and how we and our families can live safer and fuller lives. Over the years, we've eliminated many life-threatening diseases by first isolating the cause, the germ or the virus, and then taking steps to protect ourselves. Well, today there is a new understanding about what causes accidents. And this program is about those causes. To understand them, let's start by looking at one which began with a simple cup of coffee. Uh, I'm going to have to start bringing my thermos from home. This stuff is so bad. Whoops. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Excuse me, Kathy. Well, here's the left of the coffee. 
I'm going to have to get a hold of shipping and get... Okay, I'll call you right back, Patty. Okay. If we look at this accident the way we've looked at them in the past, we might say the cause was carelessness on Kathy's part, or just bad luck for Peter, the man who fell. But if we are to eliminate accidents, we can't continue to use words like carelessness and fate, as though accidents are out of our control and there's nothing we can do. To eliminate accidents in our lives, we must do the same thing that we did with those threatening diseases. We must search for and isolate the cause. Let's begin that search by looking at the accident again from Kathy's point of view. Oh, sorry. Excuse me, Kathy. Oh, no, what a mess. I'm going to have to go clean it up right away or someone's going to come and slip. Well, you just left with the copy. I'll be right back. Hold on, Kathy. You've got Patty holding for you on extension 541. Oh, can I call her back? No, she's really upset. It's about an order she should have gotten today. Uh, yes, Patty, this is Kathy. You didn't get the... Okay, I'll call you right back, Patty. Oh. After an accident, we get a lot smarter. Just ask Kathy. But isn't there a better way to learn? Remember how we talked about isolating the cause of accidents? Well, today, safety professionals are agreeing they have. They've discovered that over 90% of all accidents have the same cause, and the cause is our behavior, our own actions. But why? Why do well-intentioned people, people like you and me, cause accidents? Well, there are two important lessons that we can learn from Kathy's experience. The first one has to do with how we think about safety, our attitudes. Do we take little risks? Do we sometimes try to get by with something? And there's a second lesson. Most accidents are at the end of a chain of poor judgments and unforeseen events. Kathy's was no different. She was going to clean up the spill, but she decided to take the coffee to her office first, a link in the chain. She was only going to be a moment, but she decided to take the phone call first, another link. Peter could have seen the spill, but happened to be looking at something else, the final link. You see how important it is to break the chain at every opportunity. Now, let's assume that Kathy knows all that we've just learned. Let's go back to that moment in time and see how she would now handle the situation. Sorry. Yes. Oh, Greg, can you stay here and watch a minute so no one slips? I'll get some paper towels. Sure. We've seen how even one good decision can break the whole accident chain. The point is, our thinking, our judgment, are responsible for our actions and for our safety. Safety and success in our lives come by doing things, not just by hoping for the right things to happen. When we take every opportunity to do something that will break the link in the chain that could lead to an accident, that positive action feeds back to a more positive attitude about ourselves. A lot of what we do in life, we do out of habit. We all have good and bad ones. And if a habit means doing something that endangers life and limb, then we need to change it. Just because we've been getting away with it in the past, only proves that we're doing it on borrowed time. Now, you know your profession, and you know the safety regulations. Well, it makes sense to act safely, not only out of respect for the rules, but out of respect for ourselves. Out of an understanding that the rules are based on the hard-learned experiences of others. Look around you. The real professionals in every field have the right combination of knowledge, skills, and a positive attitude about safety. Harlan, you want to give me a hand with this? Well, what have we learned so far? 90% of all accidents are caused by our own behavior, not bad luck. And when our attitude about safety is poor, we don't always take the necessary steps to break the chain of events that can lead to accidents. Well, in this next story, we'll see something else that can have a big influence on our judgment and our safety. Okay. Yeah, um, okay, could you just hold one moment, please? Thank you. Okay, so I'll go see if I can find that part now. 
Hey, hey, Bob, how long are you going to be with that letter? Uh, about a minute. i got a customer down here I'm taking care of. Let's stop here and ask ourselves why. Why is John even considering standing on that chair? Well, I can tell you right now that he knows better. He knows it wouldn't be safe. Then why is he considering it? Let's pick up the story from the beginning and see Plus what's affecting his thinking. Yes. Um, uh, okay. Okay. Just one moment. Uh -huh. Sir, could you just hold one moment, please? Thank you. Hello. How may I help you today? We have a problem. Uh-huh. It's this air filter that I ordered today for my D7. I ordered it by the part number from the parts department up front. It doesn't fit the machine. You said for a D7? Right. Okay, yeah, this seems to be a little small for a D7. I'll go back and get a part for you right now. Could you... Hold just one moment, please. Now, Parts hold department, it. this is John. Hold it. Wait a minute. Uh-huh. Wait a minute. I can't wait for a telephone me, call. I've got a machine down and a crew waiting for this air filter. I need the part now. I was ahead of that phone. Okay. Excuse me. Could you just hold one moment, please? Uh-huh. Thank you. John? Yeah. Well, just leave. I'll get to it. Just leave right there. Okay, so I'm gonna go get that right now. All right. Hey, hey, Bob, how long are you gonna be with that letter? About a minute. I got a customer I'm taking care of. Well, if I use the chair. No, but this guy's really got a short fuse. I better use the chair and get this guy out of here. How differently John's story could have ended if he'd only ask himself, am I losing control? Of course, many things cause stress in our lives, problems with relationships, time, money, the list goes on and on. What we need to understand for safety's sake is that stress distorts our judgment. Our thinking gets scrambled when we feel that our lives are out of our control. I think that the most important thing that I've personally learned about stress is not to let frustrations make things seem worse than they really are. Not to blow them up out of proportion. John could have broken the poor judgment chain at the moment of decision by recognizing that stress was affecting his judgment. When the thought crossed his mind that maybe standing on that chair wasn't such a good idea, he should have remembered the saying, if in doubt, don't. Let's go back to that moment and have John realize that he is in control, that he can make other decisions. Okay, sir. It'll be a moment with that part. Maybe I can just get this paperwork done All in right. the meantime. And your name, sir? Uh, that was JJ Construction. Okay. And you Stress or pressure is a part of all of our lives. What is important is that each of us must find ways to keep it managed and not to let it overcome our normal good judgment. Our final story brings another concern to light. Another one that can affect all of us. Our moods can swing up or down, sometimes for no reason. And when our attitude gets like this fellow, Tom, we need to remember that our thinking and our actions can't be trusted too far. Tom, can you run these fuses down to Central Machines? Jim and Dan need these things immediately. I thought this was the rest job. It is a rest job, but this is more important. Tom, Central Machines is two blocks east on Pearl. Yeah, yeah. I got a chance to talk to Lynn and Janet yesterday. Must have been real fun. Actually, it wasn't too bad. It went... Do this. Do that. I'm supposed to be an electrician. Holy smokes. In fact, I think they might let me supervise next month. 
in a heck is that place anyway. So how are things going with you in marketing? Aaron boy. I got an appointment at 5 o'clock too. God darn it. He's going to want to be screaming at me because that isn't done. What the heck was the name of that street anyway? Wow, then you can take me out to dinner and celebrate. Was it Pearl? Yeah, Pearl. Though we might not have liked the side of Tom we just saw, he does remind us that we all have our ups and downs. Yesterday, he might have said, sure, I'll run those right over. This is a good example of how our emotions can be in strong conflict with our normal thinking and our judgment. If only Tom had been able to see himself at this moment in time, before he started the truck, he might have said, hold it, calm down. You're in no condition to drive. When we are in one of those moods that invites negative thinking, the negative thoughts feed upon one another. And as our emotions rise, our ability to make good decisions falls. When our thinking gets that far off center, our knowledge, our skills, and our good judgment are momentarily forgotten. Somehow, our thinking just freezes. There are other things that can distort our judgment that are also important to remember. Fatigue is a big one. And of course, the absolute destroyer of good judgment and clear thinking is alcohol. All of what we've heard and seen is really just common sense, isn't it? People with common sense have the ability to keep things in perspective, an ability to see themselves beyond the moment and to act calmly and confidently. Common sense and a positive mind now, those are not only the ingredients for a safer life, but also for a fuller and happier life. You know, Frank, I was thinking about what you said before about how people cause their own accidents. <laughs> I don't know. I just find that hard to believe. Well... All I can tell you about is my own accident. You know, it was one of those days at the shop. Nothing was going right. Yeah. I was upset by a lot of things. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know what you mean. I've had days like that myself. Yeah. So, after the accident, I started asking myself, over and over, you know, how could I have made such a dumb mistake? I mean, I know that equipment inside out. I've been running it for years. And the only thing I could blame my accident on was my own anger. For a moment, it just kind of took over my common sense. Oh, <laughs> so you don't get angry anymore? <laughs> I wish that were true. No, change isn't easy. But I'm working hard at keeping what's really important in life in perspective. I'm developing a new attitude. A more positive attitude that goes way beyond safety and way beyond work. It's changing my whole outlook on life. That accident did change you. Well, hopefully we learn as we live. What does this mean to you and me? These new ideas about our taking charge of our attitudes, our lives, and our safety. Well, these are only ideas until we turn them into reality in our lives. A positive attitude about safety is really a positive attitude about life. They are one and the same.